Greetings, I'm Yasmin Hanna and I am broadcasting to you from the River Nile in Egypt. <sighs> I get so incredibly inspired when I come back home to this land that I grew up in and each time I come back there's just another piece that clicks in this whole experience of life and what it means to be alive and what it means to what it even means to die and what it means to be reborn and to notice how those cycles keep coming back again and again when it's a time to wilt when it's a time to grow when it's a time to just be a small seed full of inspiration and be in the dream so just witnessing those cycles in my life uh, continuously expand and unfold and sometimes contract and retreat so this time for me being back it's a deep integration time especially with my journey with uh, sacred sexuality over the last six years and before that going into more deeper meditations and yoga and kundalini and trekking life force energy mainly so I'd love to share a little bit today around uh, the Egyptian mystery school and uh, the Egyptian temple arts. So with, the, with Egypt, there's two mystery schools. Just to simplify it, there's one which is the Osirian or which is the Osar mystery school, which is the mystery school of void. We won't go into that place right now at all. Um, and then there's the mystery school of Ra, Ra, the sun god. The, the, the solar force, the force of nature, sun goddess. Uh, it's basically just the force of nature itself, which is the sun. And when we think of the sun, we think of a pulsing life force energy that moves through every plant, every human, every animal, every bird, every cell that's just pulsating with life is filled with that solar energy. So, Going into a little bit around the anatomy of spirit, let's trek a little bit this life force energy and get an understanding of it in our, in our spiritual anatomy. Okay? So, this is exciting. For me, this is, when I heard about this, it's just like, oh, yes, that's the juice, the spiritual juice that I've been waiting for. So, we have Geb. Geb is the father. Geb is the father and he's the earth. So, Geb is the father and he's the earth. Earth is the father. So what does it feel like to feel the earth is a father, not a mother? Personally, when I think of the father, I feel the wound of separation very strong. It's like the father is the primordial abandonment wound, right? separation from consciousness, separation from God. God is a deity somewhere in the heavens, somewhere in the sky. In the other religions and other beliefs, when the Father is seemingly being extremely absent, somewhere untangible, untastable, then the, that separation becomes so vast and so big that it plays out in relationship patterns. It plays out in the inner abandonment of self, ultimately consciousness abandoning body, consciousness abandoning matter. So when the father, which is Geb, when the father becomes a sustainer, a nurturer, a sense of security, a sense of being held, a sense of receiving nutrition from what is the earth element, oh, it's like I can relax. I'm taken care of by that masculine force. And it's not somewhere separated from my being. So... Gab is this father force right at the bottom of the tree of life. Now, if we feel into it, it's like that solid, masculine, supportive, fathering energy. And then from that comes everything else. So he's the root. He's the base. And what does it feel like when that energy moves up? Now, the way I like to feel it is like this 
phallic force moving up the body, bringing up that earth energy and moving it up. Now when we see a tree, we see it almost like this big phallus coming out and all the seeds are like filling, you know, the flowers and the fruits. Wow, so that's like the semen that's pushing itself up. It's a picture, it's a symbolic representation, yet kind of makes sense, no? <laughs> so, when this father moves up, in order for the rest of our being, the rest of the faculties that make our being up, make up our spirit, if there is a disconnect from earth, if there's a disconnect due to this deeper sense of abandonment and rejection of body, the rest is not really held. So it's very important to look after the body and to stay in good health. And it's not just the feminine principle, it's also that healthy, strong masculine. Now, although this is not in the tree of life yet, right yet, but let's just go to the counterpart, right? Which is Nut, which is the mother, the grandmother, the primordial womb, which is actually makes up the entire sky and galaxy above us. How does that feel to imagine that the sky is feminine, that the sky is this womb of infinite potential? And even the word, we are from the stars, we are born of the stars, we are star seed and star dust. So we come from this primordial matter, which is the womb space, which is what makes up the universe. And we come to earth and we are conceived through this earth, through this body, through this vessel. It requires the phallus. It requires that information from the phallus. <sighs> now, when I feel the mother is this cosmic feminine womb, like celestial mother, the Milky Way, oh, I feel like... You know, it's like the universe and all that. It's not so separate. It's not so distant. I am enclosed. We are contained within the feminine. So what seems so far and beyond and so vast actually becomes a space in which we rest. So we become an, ex it's an expanded version of ourselves, And our consciousness can expand limitlessly. Okay, now, after Geb, we're going to move up into, from Geb we move into Ah. So the life force is moving up and it moves through what we call Hether, Heteru. Now for some of you, you may be aware of Heteru or heard of Hather, the mother goddess with the ears of a cow. Um, she also is represented as the fun the youthful aspect of the feminine in all man and woman. It's the part that loves to celebrate. It's the part that loves to dance. It's the part that loves to get dressed up and put on jewelry. It's that playful, innocent, dynamic kind of, mm, I love to taste things and I love to make love and I love to just enjoy the pleasures of life. It is a sensual delight to be alive. Now, Hathor in her light form is playful and youthful, and that life force energy that that force of nature represents is vibrant, is ecstatic, is fun, is youthful, and is able to enjoy life sensually, which is important. Why are we here? It's to taste, to enjoy, to smell, to be living fully in the sensual expression of life and these vessels that we are. <sighs> so, there's Hathor, and on the other side is Sobek. Now, Sobek is represented as the crocodile god, the reptilian aspect of our nature, the analytical mind, linear thinking, computer mind, Numbers, calculations, deadlines, planning, all that. Corporate jobs, cities tend to stay stuck in this loop so that almost like the brain becomes this super big machine and the body is just hanging, <laughs> dangling along after this 
hebbed. <sighs> so what happens when that becomes too dominant? What we see in the world, the left side analytical brain, the reptilian brain that has taken over, that doesn't leave room for a sensual expression of life force. Now, too much of both of them, too much of Hathor, too much of Heteru, um, will lead to indulgence, will lead to addictions, will lead to this shadow aspect that needs to feed in order to be. So the senses become so overly stimulated. So a need for a need for sex, a need for food, a need for drugs, uh, just anything that fills the body up. And, uh, and it doesn't make sense because obviously logically that makes a person sick. Um, if the logic's always working too, then it leads to a complete disconnect from the sensual body. So these two need to be in, uh, in balance. Sensuality, mm, a sense of being embodied through tantra, dance, music, contact improv, uh, lovemaking, gardening, cooking, all that, all those delicious feminine mothering qualities. And then on the other side, being able to be logical and reasoning. Okay, am I giving, spending too much here for my indulgence? Am I spending too much money? That doesn't make sense, you know? Using our logic in order to create a healthy balance. Now, when those two are balanced and life force is moving through that, ah, where does it go? To Isis. Isis. Useth. Her name alone is ringing on the planet in such strong vibratory forces uh, we won't go too I, I would like just to touch in briefly into all these uh, forces of nature's within our being and these faculties and um, hopefully do more uh, in depth into each one but for now ah uh, feel that word just Isis or the is is isness of life now Isis is a key player in spiritual embodiment into the evolution of man and woman into their divine celestial nature why ah so isis holds the faculty of memories now when one person grows up and has uh, an experience and then it experiences that again and it becomes a reoccurring pattern of some sort that stays in the memory until that starts to create what the patterning and conditioning and neurological patterning that makes up that person's personality and behavior so you can already feel that that's already a very important faculty it's who we are how we express ourselves in our inner world and that expresses itself outwardly now in her shadow in the shadow of isis she stays weaving the drama, weaving the dream, the master weaver. Whatever we think we become, whatever we dream we are is a powerful force. This is who I am. And yet when things stay in the subconscious, it's like staying in the darkness, staying in the shadow. And one stays there in that faculty, unable to experience band and move up with that life force into Horus, Heru, which is the childlike innocence, golden nature, Christ consciousness, the willpower to just evolve and move upward, upwards and leave, or let's say integrate and transcend that plane of murkiness and spinning back in the stories and the dramas and the reoccurring patterns in life and the voices that are the victims and the voice that is the perpetrator and the voice that is the inner terrorist all that is happening in the mental plane within our being and that begins to wake up and when Isis, when Isis is woken up, she becomes the master magician. She is able to begin to manifest power, presence, beauty, purpose, purpose. Why am I here? Suddenly it becomes clear. Everything else is a spinning, a spinning of that story of who I am. <sighs> okay, deep breath.
that word we are living in a dream within a dream wake up it is the time of awakening time to remember who we are and isis is so famous for her remembering of the masculine the scatteredness of human of our human mind bringing the pieces together to a more holistic body sense consciousness one can rest and come home knowing that that inner queen is holding the foundation the foundation of where sex and power and strength lies ultimately in the womb space in our sex it is so important to go down and deeply penetrate those areas of our being into the wounds into where it hurts and Isis is that protectress grieve and cry your tears laugh and shriek at yourselves in disbelief and in letting it go the silliness the stupidity sometimes of knowing things so well and reoccurring them because the trauma has not been moved through the pain has not been felt and it's okay that's the beauty of it it's all perfect it's all an expression of being alive being human being in these amazing bodies <sighs> so when one begins to wake up one claims the power the might of their darkness their shadow and their womb as a powerful co-creator with this universe and it leads to a birthing of one's purpose moving up into Horus and we will stay there for now there is more to come we have the upper branches which are such a beautiful way to navigate in this inner journey of our human evolution the evolution of consciousness though it is now a time for it to penetrate penetrate the body as a beloved <sighs> so <laughs> thank you for listening I will keep you uh, updated with uh, more of these insights and sharings from the Egyptian mystery school <sighs> it is truly a beautiful time to be alive and weaving this tapestry together with all our unique and individual flavors and inspirations and our own unique poetry and our own unique way of feeling and experiencing the uh, things so um, I look forward to sharing and to receiving much love be well greetings